emotion, logic, and limiting belief factors. That's how I look at every single sale, okay? And when I say sale, I'm talking about you want to sell your mom, cousin, brother, uncle, dog, any kind of person. When you're selling an idea, you're selling a service, you're selling a product, it doesn't matter. There's always going to be emotion, logic, and limiting belief factors always attached to that decision, okay? So for example, you want to marry somebody, okay? There's always going to be that probability mindset. Everyone has this probability mindset. They have a percentage in their head. They're like, it's like a scale. No one's going to ever be 100% certain about making a decision. But as you get to know the person, you get what? Closer to that what? That 100%. So the scale tips on the decision where you say, you know what, I want to marry this person. Right or wrong? Okay? It happens with everybody. It happens with every decision people make. They have to emotionally be stimulated. Right? Emotionally be stimulated to say, yes, I want to do this. Okay? They have to logically, it has to make logical sense to them. It has to make logical sense. And thank God what we're selling is very, very logical. But if you stay too much on the logical side in the, in the presentation, what happens? You don't touch on the emotions and you can't get them to make decisions. Okay? The other thing that most people forget about, they get the emotions they're involved, they're building good relationships with the customer, they're having good conversations with them, but they're not thinking about what? Limiting belief factors. Things that are stopping them from making a decision. Things that are stopping them from making a choice to actually move forward. There's a block. For example, in their minds, they don't do business right there and then. That's a limiting belief factor they may have. Because the last time they made a decision, what happened? Somebody screwed them. Somebody lied to them. So in my presentations, when I'm talking to customers, I'm trying to eliminate, I'm trying to do a bunch of checks, right? I need to check off the emotional stuff. I need to check off the logical stuff. And last thing, Jason, what do I need to do? Check off the limiting beliefs. Remove all the limiting belief factors. The second I open my mouth, hey, how you doing? My name is Michael with Nova Energy. I see here that you, Mr. James, you put in some information to get more info on solar. Is that correct? Yes, it is. Awesome. My job is super simple. I always give them my intention. My intention is very simple, like just like with doors. My reason. Why I'm here. The reason why I'm here is because of X, Y, and Z. You have to give them a reason because they're thinking about three things always. Who are you? What do you want? What the fuck's going on? That's what they're thinking about. So I have to answer those questions immediately fast. So even with a warm lead that comes in through an internet website, I'm still making sure they understand my intention. I'm kind of giving them the expectation of what's going to happen over the next couple of minutes. So Mr. Customer, over the next couple of minutes, you have a couple of minutes? Perfect. Over the next couple of minutes, what I'm going to do is ask you a couple of questions to see exactly where you're at. So when I'm presenting, I'm always giving them expectations. This is what's going to happen. This is what we're going to do. I'm giving them the outline of what's going to happen so they have a, they understand. Because you don't want surprises. Nobody wants to make decisions on surprises. Once I do that, I go over asking them questions. I see here you put your zip code. What's your address? Okay, I get the address. Then I say, okay, great. How long have you been living there? Now, why do I ask these questions? Now, you're, you're probably asking that either in the beginning of the presentation, in your situation, or the appointment setter is asking that early on in the conversation. Why is that important? So that they understand so that they understand that I understand them. That's a deeper level than just asking for your own information. So most people will say, I'm asking because I want to know their situation. That's perfect. But I'm not only asking to know what's going on with their situation, I'm also asking to solidify in their mind that I care about them. Because nobody gives a shit about how much information you can give them until they know how much you care about them. And the best way to show, about, to show someone you care about them is to what? To understand them, to listen to them, to pay attention to them, to understand where they're coming from. So in order for me to help them, I don't go to straight solar, I go to understanding them. Because when I show them I understand them, in their mind psychologically, they're like, wow, this guy understands me. This guy's paying attention to me. No one's ever listened to me before. So I'm doing those emotional checks in their head. Does that make sense? So I'm not just asking just to gather data. That's a salesman's mentality to gather data, which is important with the fact finding, which is 100% important. But I'm also asking to let them know psychologically that I care about you. And I'm doing this because I need to know exactly where you're at so I can serve you the best. And the best way to do that, not to say, Mr. Customer, we're 10-star customer service. The best way to do it is to actually do it. Do you see the checks? It starts from when? The beginning of the conversation. I'm not closing here. I'm closing all the way in the beginning. That's called a layup. So by the time I get to the close, there's very, very little objections. Okay? So once I get that information, how long you've been living there, what's your roof condition, I'm asking all these questions just to kind of create engagement and also let them know I care about your situation. I show up to the customer on the first phone call. This is the presentation. Okay? We obviously know there's five steps to a conversation. Intro, short story, presentation, close, rehash. Or intro, fact finding, demo, close, rehash. Because my presentations, the way I do it, is it's asking questions, qualifying questions. The second part is my little presentation. And then I'm actually then doing what? The solo. So the, the, it's a little Google slide. That Google slide answers all their objections in that Google slide. I do that, and I've been testing it online, and I love it. So I'm doing it either through Zoom, 
if they're able to do Zoom, but like I had yesterday, for example, and the other guy I had the other day, 70, this guy was 74 years old. So one of the questions I asked them in the beginning of the conversation in the appointment setting, are you guys, do you guys, are you guys retired and pay federal taxes or you guys are retired and pay no income taxes? The reason why I asked that question is because I need to know how I'm gonna pitch them. If it's an older couple, they don't pay federal taxes, can they go solar? Yes, they can. The way I pitched it in the, in the Google slide, I show them the information, I show them the statistics, I show them the data. So I'm showing them logically, check, 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 and they have to agree with me. They have to see the logical, that I make sense. They have to also understand that I care about them empathetically, and I'm there for them, and I'm understanding them. And I'm building a rapport with them and a relationship with them throughout the whole process. And they know that, I give you guys, you can listen to my recordings, I'm not pressure tactics. Like the way I am right now is not the way I am on presentations. It's weird. I'm very calm, collected, very gentle. I'm different. Right? I'm very, I'm very, I'm very soft. I'm very aggressive here because that's who I am. But when I'm coming to the customer, I'm mirroring them 100%. If they're calm and collected, he, I'm calm and collected. He's talking slow. I am talking slow. Right? I'm matching their energy. I'm matching who they are. So we're on the same page. We're like best friends. Right? And when they call me, we're like best friends all the time because I'm literally matching them. My whole mind is so focused on well, how I can serve them. How can I help them? I don't even know how much commission. I don't give a fuck about that. How can I serve them? Everything that I'm saying, everything that I'm saying, everything that I'm asking has a fucking purpose. There is no questions without purpose. There's three parts to it, right? There's qualifying questions. There's the Google slide in the presentation. Then I go into solo. Those are my three steps. In the qualifying question, the first thing I ask them is, what do you know about solar? Why do I ask them that? I want to know what the fuck they know. Do they know good things, bad things? Are they educated, not educated? Sometimes they say, I don't know nothing. Perfect. I'll be your first teacher. The second question I ask them, what are some questions you have or concerns you have about solar? Now that I know their qu questions and concerns, I have an understanding of where they're at now. I already know where they're at in the game of solar. Are they against it? Are they with it? Are they happy with it? Because the next question is what? What are you looking to gain from solar? I always ask that. Let me ask you a question. What are you looking to gain from this? It's like going to, going to a data girl. What are you looking to gain from this relationship? What are you looking for out of this? If we end up being together, what are you looking to gain out of this? I cannot create the idea for them and say, here. They have to take the idea and own that idea. So I have to put them in the right marketplace, in the right environment so they can build that idea on their own. The strongest idea is when the person created that idea on their own. Not the one that you try to put into their head. I always ask what they like first, and then because I want them to have the idea. The last idea is what? What they dislike. So I ask them, what do you like about the utility company? The reason why I ask that is because I can't say, what do you dislike about them? Because now I'm showing them to think only about the negatives. But what do you like about them? Right? What is the likes of the utility? Let me ask you another question, Mr. Customer. What do you dislike? And now they're going through the fucking shit. Oh, I hate the fact that it's going up. Oh, I hate the fact that it's this. I hate the fact that it's that. So now they're giving me all the what? All the garbage. I'm like, wow. Yes, I understand. I'm with you. It's exactly why most people are what? Going solar. Going solar. Because they see that problem as well. Now I understand your situation better. Let me kind of go over a little bit about us. I go into the Google slide. Now the Google slide is very simple. So this is Nova Energy. This is who we are. This is a, these are the three tenants that we believe in. After I go over that, I go to the next slide and I show them, hey, here's some of the customers we took care of. Pictures of families, of people. You're not the only one. Old, young, fat, skinny, doesn't matter, right? Then I go into the three reasons why everyone's going solar. So Mr. Customer, these are the three reasons why most people go solar. Boom, boom, boom. Which one is it for you? And now they're giving me what? <laughs> Data, baby. And I want to know what's important to them. And when they say save the planet, I'm going to focus 100% on saving the planet and make them feel like they're making a huge change and an important decision. If they say energy independence, I already know. I may have to talk about a battery. I may have to talk about making sure it's hurricane proof. Whatever it is, that's going to talk about. If they say saving money, I already know that to them, they're in this situation where they want to save a little bit of finances. Or it could be both. Now that I get the information, awesome. So Mr. Customer, uh, uh, we're done with asking questions. Let me just kind of educate you a little bit on how electricity works. Let me ask you this. Do you know how electricity actually works for your home? Okay. Why am I doing that? Because they have no fucking idea. People pay their bill. Oh, 150? Okay. I need to make sure they feel the fucking pain. By the time I'm done with them, they'll be like, damn, I should have went solar five years ago. Let me explain to you that nobody ever sat down with you and explained this to you. They never cared about you to explain this to you. Now I'm p pushing what? Logic and emotion. Okay? And I'm also removing the limiting belief factor of why should I switch to from the utility company? Because they're thinking like, why should I switch? There's no headache. But now they're seeing the bigger picture of why if they don't do this now, what happens? They're f***ed. Now I go into the next slide, which is what? Solar. Let me ask you a question, Mr. Customer. Do you know how solar works? Well, let me explain to you. Every time I go through every single step, I ask them, make sense? 
Everything good? Are we clear? Any questions on this? No. I close out that, that, that specific slide, that specific conversation, and I go to the next thing. So they're always understanding what's going on step by step by step. I make sure they're on the same page as me. I'm not 100 miles an hour and they're 20. We're on the same fucking highway together. Make sense? Awesome. Any questions? Perfect. Great? Awesome. Next topic.